Thank you all very much. And uh, of course, um, I'm also delighted to be here. And first, when I came in and I was told I was supposed to be amongst Wes Hall and uh, Michael Holden, I was wondering where do I fit in? And see Hugo, I was wondering where do I fit in in this? So I decided I was, was going to talk and to share with you some of the experiences that I've had with Viv when we were growing up. All right, of course, uh, we started playing cricket very early. The old man, of course, was a cricketer himself. And it was like, it was ritual for us to be in the park at a particular time. And Viv would be the one with the bat and I would ball. I should have been a bowler. I don't know where, where, where I went wrong. But anyhow, um, and the old man would say, come forward, you know, and, and, and coaching us all the time. But the point, why I'm saying this is, is because I think the success starts at home, right? Success starts at home. The parents has to, has to be very supportive of, of whatever the children um, is interested in. And of course, it may be a f sort of mild form of, of um, what you call um, abuse <laughs> in a little way because our father was also a prison officer and of course, at times, he would bring prison home, you know. <clears throat> so, and I can remember too that, you know, and I must give credit to the older guys in the community. Um, we had a bigger brother by the name of Donald, Donna Mitch, and I, I believe that he was the first one to have actually um, noticed that there was something special about Viv. I gotta tell you the reason why, because after we came from school, and of school, school will, open, uh, will be finished before the guys, the big guys, get home from, from, from work. So we would be in the park before the bigger guys. And when the bigger guys come from the park and we were playing, we had to vacate the park. But they always kept Viv. So you say, no, 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 okay, you can play with us. And so we, the other little boys of the same age group, would be a little cheerleading group to you know, to support this little guy who would put some licks on these big guys. So I would first of all give credit also to, you know, to, to Donald for, for recognizing that there was something special about Viv. And then after he decided that, uh, he was playing for St. John's at the, at the time, and then he said to the old man, came and spoke to him and said, look, I want to register Viv in St. John's. I want him to come and play with us in St. John's, right? So I'm just coming to you to get some permission. Oh yeah, man. The old man said, yeah, he needs his exposure. Yes, I think he's ready. I've been, I've been doing my little work with him. I think it's now time for him to go out there and face some, some real, real cricket. And so Saturday came, and Viv was getting himself ready, and he started putting on a white. And, the, and I tell you, the white was from the old man. What the old man used to use at that particular time, this is what Viv started using. So when Viv getting ready, the old man said, so where do where, where you think you're going? We say, I have a game today. No, 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 no. You think, you think cricket can go in part? You go back and sit down in there. And of course, when he came back, I had to be the one to run up to the other street because living in, it was Drake Street at that particular time. Now it's a very the street. Our brother used to live in Hood Street. So he sent me up to Hood Street. You know, go and tell, tell Donald that the old man don't want me to go and play. You know, so I went, ran up the street very quickly and said, look, you know, Viv is now getting ready to come and play this game, and you know, the old man is saying that he should not go and play the game. He said, yes, but he told me that he could play. He says, yeah, but he's not, <laughs> he's not let him go to play. You know? So Donald came down and said, uh, Daddy, um, what, what's the problem? He said, wait, Viv, why are you taking so long? Put, put on your clothes and get out of the damn place, man. <laughs> right? But growing up in ovals also, um, we were very, very competitive, and so we, we played a lot of games. And at first, it starts in the backyard. You know, our gate was, was a fence. I mean, sorry, it was, was, was a wicket with the three stump mark with a chalk. And of course, Viv first would grab the bat and say, batting first. And so we would play a test match, me and Viv alone. Right, sometime I'll be the West Indies and Viv was England. And I, and I can assure you, England used to do very well at that particular time because. <laughs> Because, I mean, and, and, I mean, it's just like the cricket that we play now today. Because, I mean, we, we, we took time for lunch. <laughs> then we went back again. We were still batting. I was still bowling. And so, 
in retrospect, I'm, 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 I'm seeing now that, you know, that was his stuff. Now, we, 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 we got now to the, the park where all the other guys in the, in, the, in the neighborhood would play, and we played test match too. I mean, I will tell you the evolution of, of the whole cricket ball. It was an old coconut wrapped in, in paper, and right, we use an old bicycle tube and we cut it up, right, and we wrap it around until it comes nice and round. And we would, you know, it would last very longer, than, I, I suppose, than the five and a half ounces you guys use later on. Right? And after we played in the park, and Viv would bat for, for hours. And then when it's my time to bat now, and the ball came off here, of course, when it hit you right on the wrist, you're out. And I wanted to bat a little more, so I said, no, it came off here. And Viv said, no, it came off here. And so on, argue, uh, we argued, and then we came a fight. <laughs> And then he came up, big fight. And then everybody in the neighborhood would see Mervyn and Vivi fighting. Right? And so the news would reach the old man. And the old man would say, no, I heard you guys were fighting today. I don't want you guys to go back into the park and play any more cricket. And I would bathe Viv. Because <laughs> I know he loved that very, very much. And of course, you know. And then he would want to come and beat me off now for doing that. And then I would call to dad and then he beg me sorry. I said, sorry, sorry, sorry. About three, four hours passed. The old man went to work. And then I saw Viv with his bat. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to play some cricket. He said, but dad said, we're not supposed to play any cricket. We're not supposed to go. Look, he's going to have to kill me. You have to kill me. So at that early age, cricket was his love and you could not stop him from the thing that he loved. Whether or not punishment came in, he wanted to go and play the game. I remember when he played against Australia. He played for the Leeward Islands against Australia. And Lily, uh, the first ball of Lily bowled to him, it was a four square cut, I can remember very well. And the scoreboard was more at the prison area. And the next ball, he was out. And so when he came home, of course, he had to rehearse to the old man. The old man said, how you got out today? <laughs> and he had to go for the bat. <laughs> And then rehearsed in front of the old man exactly how he got out. And so the old man said, you got caught behind? Uh, where did the ball pitch? And he said, the ball, well, well, to be quite honest, I didn't see the ball. He says, so why you fire bat after? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so th that in itself was, was, was very critical and, and uh, it was the biggest critic. And of course, um, I, I go on to tell you when we started playing now for Antigua, uh, for school, we started playing for grammar school and we went on to Antigua, play for Antigua, and then we, I played, I was lucky to get a play for the Leeward Lions. I had a good year, I think, in 1971, and I got, uh, I got uh, selected for the Leeward Lions, and we played against the MCC right here in Antigua. And I think this is what King Franca is talking about, because... Um, uh, we could, there were some runs that we had to make. The Leeward Lions had to make to win. And I remember Henry Blofeld. Blofeld. Um, you could hear the commentary uh, around the ground because guys had their radio and you could hear it, you know, the, the Richards brothers are here to die. Well, they do it for the Leewards. And so when I went out to bat, when I went out to bat, first of all, uh, Hector, who was a captain, he was from St. Kitts and he was the captain of the Leeward Lions team. And he tell me, told me when I go out there to tell Viv, that we, we can't make the run, so we're going to play for a draw. At that particular time, when I went out to bat, uh, Tony Gregg brought on Keith Fletcher to bowl some leg spin. And he bowled three balls to me. That was 12 runs. And so Viv called me from the other end and said, Murph, come here. So I went down to the other side, and he said, um, what you said the captain told you earlier? And to tell me, he said, no, the captain said that we're not going to be able to make the run, so we're going to play for a draw. He said, and you playing shots like that? I said, but <laughs> Viv, where expect me to play three balls that I can hit for four? You know, down he says, you just threw your Looked at me in a kind of way, and he went back to the other end. And after that, every last ball was a single. <laughs> he took control of the game. And I saw that I was enjoying a little the other end, you know. So I said, no, no, not this time. He's not going to get me this time. So I started off a little late. And so he had to dash back, you know. He, he, 
I almost ran him out. So he dashed back and he looked at me, you know, very viciously, you know. And that is when Henry Blofeld says, yeah, they're going great guns here, in control of this game and whatnot. And then Tony Gregg decided he's going to tighten up things a bit and he brought Mike Hendricks from the other end. Now, I would have been at the other end now had I taken a run. So now the first ball, Mike Hendricks bowled to me. I, I played it down very nicely. In the second one, I went for an drive and I heard, Pop! and I heard at the other end, yes, take that. T take, he said, take that. <laughs> He said, take that. You come out here to Skylark. See, this is a serious thing out here, you know? So I was fooling around with his game again, so of course uh, I couldn't do that. But I want to tell you how that on drive came, came about, right? And um, uh, for, for Wes Hall and, 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 and for Mikey, all right, Mr. T, we used to play in, 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 the, in the park, in, in a community, where if you hit the ball straight over the fence, you played straight, the ball would come back in two halves. <laughs> All right, so there was a, a, a huge building to the west of that area with a wall. So if you hit the ball across the wall and, and it hit full in the wall, you get a six, but you're not out. And we would have had the ball again. So that is where that on drive came. And again, Though stepping out of the wicket, it was a way that, you know, uh, of giving the bowler a chance to get your wicket. Because if he bowls straight at that wicket, he's coming up where, right exactly where you want him. And so Viv would step out and dig him for his wicket. And that is how some of those shots came about. But he definitely changed the game of cricket. That <laughs> of one day cricket. Because I remember coming home from some of those tours. The old man is saying, look, I see you playing, you know. How can you play some of them shots there in, in, in test match? In test match. And so the old man said, you, you, you don't understand these people, how they all set up these tours for you all, you know. They, 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 they play a test for you all. You all play one test. And then between that test, they play one. They say, you all get mixed up. You all play one day when it's supposed to be five days. When it's five days, when it's supposed to be one day, you know. And the old man was always, you know, um, suspicious of, 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 of how the, the arrangement was made because um, those, those teams felt that we didn't have the brain to think and to adjust to, to the games. But as according to what Wells said, is that we have to play cricket the way that we know cricket is to be played. And no one else can play the game like how we do it. It's, it's definitely. And it, 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 it is because of the culture the way how we um, believe that you, anything you can do, we can do it better. That is the kind of approach that we have. I, 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 I witnessed some of these younger players now being intimidated by bowlers and they walk away. I see Desmond Haynes to Murph Hughes from Australia right here in Antigua. He bowled him a ball and Haynes moved out of the way. You know, and then he came up and he tried to look at Haynes and Haynes gave him a kiss. That is confidence, being sure what you have. If you have the tools for a job, anybody can come and bring the job for you. Once you are equipped with the same thing of the knowledge, the skill, and the commitment for what it is and the desire, there's nothing else that can stop that. And the players of the past had that. This is what we need to um, be uh, uh, through talks, speeches by Wes Hall and by Holden, people who have experienced uh, all sorts of things that it should be passed on to your younger players. I want to believe that anyone who wants to captain the West Indies team, right, need to, like an examination, like a CXC or, or GCE, that they should go and study all the captains of the past and what they went through, and they have to pass that before they could be given captaincy. Knowing exactly where we came from and where we are and, and what we need to do to, be, to, 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 to be continue to be successful. Okay, so there was another instance when we played against a, a touring team from India. No, no, no. It, it was a mixed team. There was Shandra Shaker in that team. I think it was Mendip Akons from England. And we, Antigua was playing against that particular team. And myself and Viv met in the wicket. And I'm telling you, I was confused. It, I heard the ball behind me, and I hear, he's spinning the ball in his hand, you know, and perhaps maybe from, from Roti, how they dealt in Roti, why he had the ball doing all sorts of things, and I was looking back and saying, wow, you know, so when I 
played my first, my first ball, the ball. I played about three or four shots to the one ball. Luckily, it wasn't straight on the stumps. It went to the wicket keeper. The other two balls, I was still struggling, and then he came on the edge and he said, single. And I said, oh, gladly, I went down to the other end. And then Viv went to the other end, and I said, well, look, I'm going to have a look at him and see if he's something that I can learn. And when the guy bowled Viv the other, the fourth ball, he was down at the Catholic church. Boom. Like if he's nothing. Boom. I look at this, strange. The fifth ball, boom. Catholic church. I said, Boom! Just short of the boundary. That's four. So I looked at the umpire who was standing there. You know, it was Jacobs at that time, uh, I, 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 a mechanic fellow. And uh, I asked him, I said, Look, he's bowling me a, a, a little tougher than Viv. Is, isn't that so? Said, <laughs> right? And the, the umpire said, Tall man. You didn't see a class dunk there, man. A class dunk <laughs> Class dunk there, man. Class dunk there. So, you know, and of course there is that, uh, those rumors of, 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 of someone from a Libre Lions tournament bowling river ball that he could have been held before and the umpire said, not out, because he came here to see Viv Bat. So, <laughs> so there, there, there's stories about that. But and I'll tell you another thing, because Hugh and everybody talk about how humble Viv is. Really, it is so, because he told me a couple of stories and it has to do with Bones here. Bones had followed Viv um, a lot of places, Pakistan, India, um, I don't know if you've been down to Australia, but it was at the time when Wesley was talking about that same transition from, from Clive Lloyd and, and making sure that there's con continuity um, to, of putting the team you know, in, in good hands. And I think there were rumors about someone else might be given the captaincy. And uh, Viv told me, uh, can you imagine, Merv, you know, Bones, you know, Raspi, but we, we come up, man, and, and I'm talking to Bones, and then this fella call me on the side and tell me, look, if you want to be captain of the West Indies team, you, know, you have to be careful who, who, who you're seeing with, you know. And we've said, man, go away. You, you, you want to talking about people in South Africa, right, who are treating their own people in a particular way, and you now coming to tell me how I, you know, I must be like those people to treat. No, 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 no. If it takes them to give somebody else, and he, he used the word of blue eye, long hair, boy, the captain, see, let him do that, right? But he stood up because of, of the friendship and of, 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 of the loyalty of, of the people who loved him and supported him, and the captain, see, didn't matter to him, right? Once he was able to play the game and, and, and enjoy himself, as, as, as Holding said. So there are quite a couple of things. And I can tell you another thing, too. When we were filling out a form, he was trying to get a, a visa to go down to, I think it was uh, India, and so I brought the farms and so for him. And this was really funny because um, he wrote his name, and when he came to the address, right, he wrote Drake Street. So I said, Viv, you know, Drake Street? No, no. It's a Vivian Richard Street? No, you know. He said, yeah, well, man, let, let, let stay, let stay, what the hell? I mean, he, you know, this is Viv, I said, well, Viv, if it's in the name of the street is Sir Vivian Richards, don't be afraid to write Sir Vivian Richards in the name of the street. That's, that's the address that you want the thing to go to, you know what I mean? But he said, no, you're all right, leave it, leave it at Drake Street. <laughs> leave it at Drake Street. So, I mean, you know, uh, how, how humble he was. And I said, whoa, that's, that's strange war, you know what I mean? But then again, as, as King Frank, I said, how I love to imitate people a lot, right? Um, <laughs> All across Antigua, I mean, I, I get that. Viv brother, Viv brother, Viv brother. I mean, Viv would be playing. Um, and people listening on the radio and hear Viv just knock a four and I pass and say, hey, Viv. <laughs> and, and, and of course, I'll answer, you know. I, I'll answer. And Viv, Viv says the same thing. He says, you know, people say, Merv, and he answers. But all over the Caribbean, wherever I go, it's always, you, hey, you look like, like Viv boy. You're a Viv brother? And so I uh, humbly I said yes, uh, yeah, I mean, but um, you know, and uh, perhaps they may look at me and see that I'm wary of it, you know. But then I was so happy when Viv came back from one of those tours in Australia and says, Viv, you know, I was walking in Australia, and some people asked me if you were Mervyn's brother. So, 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 
so, so, so, so, so, so, so things sort of balance out a bit, you know what I mean? I say, I say, I say. I say, Viv, if you can live with it, I can live with it here in the career, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but um, Viv has been a good brother, right? Um, he's been a good brother, and uh, he, there was things that the old man told us that I believe, you know, had an influence in the way you approached everything. The old man used to tell us uh, from very early, be proud for what you stand for and be careful for what you fall for. And so I go through life that kind of way because, you know, from time to time you have some guys who wants to get in things that il that's illegal and, feel, and have a feeling that you can perhaps help them with it. And then I would listen, you know, because it sounds very attractive, w what can happen, you know. And so I would I'd give a good ear and then halfway through it I hear, be proud for what you stand for and be careful for what you fall for. And so I would admit to these people and say, look, oh gosh, I'm sorry, but I'm not good at those kind of things, you know. And, and I, 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 perhaps I can maybe direct it to somebody who can help you, you know, that kind of way, you know. But the old man was, you know, had a, you know, influence in, in, in our life. I mean, it starts at the home. And I always think that's success. I mean, you look at this, uh, the, the William sister. It was the father who had those two kids you know, in, as I said, it's a mild form of abuse, but, but I mean, he, was, he had them on the, on the tennis court. Tiger Woods' father, you know, it starts in the home. So I'm just saying this for all those parents who, you know, who wants to breed success and breed people um, to be successful, is that they, you know, you, you have to have an interest from early and spend time, quality time, uh, giving them something very positive to do, you know, and then hopefully that they can get to an institution like we did at the Antigua Grammar School, and uh, where there was a strong sporting, um, uh, we were, you know, program there, and then when we came back to the community, we had sports people within the community who assisted us again, and that's, that is the, the road to success, you know, I mean, you know, after you become a particular age, and then you, you know, you, you know, you decide that you're going to let them decide what they want to do. But after you've broken them into a little place, Viv couldn't choose anything else but cricket, even though he was good at football also. And um, like uh, the, what used to say in the old time days that people used to lead from in front, not so nowadays, you know. <laughs> to tell you the truth, you know, when you start off in front, there's nobody behind you. You understand what I mean? So sometimes you find a leader behind pushing you, let's go, guys, let's go, let's go, let's go. And we were sort, sort of like that. I mean, he had his, he was a showman in cricket. I was a, sh a showman in football, but I don't think he could accept that. Because I remember one time we were playing a game and, and, and I, you know, we were comfort, comfortably in front when I was on the ball and all of a sudden somebody came and pushed me off. Boom, it was Viv. Say, you come into fool around, man, let's go and get some more goals, you know. Um, he was that type of play, fella. And losing, oh. I mean, you know, I don't know how many of you know that he used to suck his tongue a bit and put one hand on the arm. You know, when he lost anything, that is the kind of look that he had. Um, our mom, of course, was very supportive because at times, you know, she, as a matter of fact, they think that Viv got his strength from her, from, from, from the old lady, because um, when we wanted to go and play any test match on a Sunday, which was forbidden because we had to go to church uh, early on Sunday, 8 o'clock, and then we had to go to Sunday school 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and then again uh, 7.15 mass, um, evening song. And then when there was a big match going on, uh, you know, we would pretend that we were sleeping around the time we were supposed to go to Sunday school. And our mom was on our side because um, she said, oh, let the, the boys and them sleep, man, because they went to church this morning, and of course they're going tonight, so... They can miss Sunday school today. And all you hear the old man say, huh? And I mean, you know, he would put on his clothes like he's getting ready to work when he, didn't, when he was really off and made a spin around, you know. And then when he came back, he saw myself and Vivi in the park, park playing. And he just says, Marvin and Vivi, come. 
And when we got there, he says, okay, you, all, you guys want to go and play cricket? Oh, yeah, yes, there's that. Okay, take your pants off and go. At that particular time, we knew exactly what, was it, you know, what it was to be a man. So, of course, the shirt was, <laughs> couldn't pull on far enough to cover that manhood. But um, then we didn't want to go because of how he said, no, no, um, Malcolm, you can't, you can't let the boys in. No, they want to go and play. They don't go to Sunday school because he was a strict disciplinarian. And as I said before, he was a prison officer and he sometimes brought prison, uh, the prison home. And Mama used to tell him, I mean, suppose you had two girls, Malcolm. Suppose you had two girls, you know. But um, she has always been there for us. Um, uh, and of course, as I said, you know, our father too was, was, was very, very supportive. He really started this whole thing because, I mean, uh, he wanted to, um, for Viv to, you know, um, and myself to have what he didn't get, maybe an opportunity. Because, uh, I mean, some people used to tell us a lot about him. Uh, that when he used to play the game, I mean, he used to come and tell you exactly, where, exactly how he's going to get you out. He said, you, you're a Jumbi crowd man. You go, you go first slip. I mean, you go first slip. He said, what, what tell you? I can remember a story one day when um, he was telling one of Antigua's finest batsmen, uh, finer batsmen, um, that as soon as Kui throw the ball in the ear, you, you run down the wicket. Right? So he said, Danny, take the ball and bowl if you want the ball now. You take the ball and bowl if you want the ball. And so the old man, coming from the prison, rest down his little carrier behind the stump, and then throw one in the ear, right? And, and when, when the batsman came down the wicket and missed, he just took up the carrier. He didn't even wait to see the, <laughs> the wicket keeper stump him. He said, there you go, man. I'm going to tell her, you know. <laughs> but my father, he had also... I think Viv is very much like him. Viv was born on the 7th of March, and, and, and our father was on the 13th of March. And so the two of them, um, identical in the way they, were th they would think, you know, always sometimes sus suspicious of, of people. And let me tell you, um, Viv is a person who knows who is for him and who's against him. And so I'm saying, you know, in, in a whole arena, how you would know in the stand of who, right? Because perhaps you'll hear people bet that, I bet you don't make 10. And then I would try to reason with them and say, look, Viv, um, you know, sometimes people bet negative to get a positive and hope they lose. <laughs> like hope they lose a bet, you know. I bet you $100, Viv don't make 10. And when they lose a 10 and Viv make 100, they're happy. But they lost $100. And Viv, didn't, he didn't buy that. <laughs> he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't buy that at all because he told me a story of when uh, he had done well in a, in a Leeward Islands tournament and there was a man from the neighborhood by Mr. Henry who had, um, who had sponsored a trip for him to go to Barbados to watch New Zealand and the West Indies play. And while he was there, um, it was in Kensington Ovals at that time, uh, Sir Garfield Sobers was feeling some way leg slip when landscape was bowling. And he was telling me the story, you know. And he says, look, Merv, believe me, Sir Garfield Sobers, he was not even, he was minding his business. He was more or less fixing his color and looking at his, his shadow. Right? When the ball came and, and the ball came straight to him and fell through his lap and he tried to juggle it, but he, you know. And there were two Bajans sitting beside him and said, God blind you, man. The master tried to die for that ball, couldn't hold on to it. And Viv looked across and said, wait, you guys watching the same game I watch? And the guy said, what, what's wrong with you, man? If the, master, if, the, if the great man couldn't hold on to that, nobody else could hold on to that. He tried like hell, man. You know? And Viv said, you see how people are very loyal? I mean, he says, look, in Barbados, so God feels sober, can't do anything wrong. And I suppose, you know, when you hear like people would, you know, um, uh, bet against and so forth, you know, you, you know them and you mark them and it says, look, Viv, this, this fellow is saying hello to you. Yeah, he, he looked the other way, you know. I said, he, he's probably one of those who, who were betting against him, you know, but he was very much like that. And I remember very early too um, of that famous test, uh, the old man took myself and Viv 
um, that was visual lessons. Right after the, the, the physical thing on the field, he took us to the Deluxe Cinema to watch that famous drawn test between West Indies and Australia. Right, and um, I saw a couple of shots, and then I remember myself and Viv went back home and I said, Viv, you know something? I see them guys play some shots now, and you play them same shots now. But the only problem is, right, is that you're not long in the wicket to play more of them shots. Oh, hush your mouth, you chat too much. Hush your mouth, you chat too much. But every time he says that, I knew I was saying something very correctly. So sometimes I would also uh, say certain things to him. He try to come and explain certain things to me because listening on the comment, you know, on the, with the commentators and, and, and Tony Koza in the beginning, right, used to say, and Rich, Rich, Richard's hit this one in the air. He's got to be, oh, oh no, it, oh, he takes two. Oh, they, they got two runs. And I said, and I used to hear it quite a bit. And then I, when he came back, I said, Viv, why are you hitting ball in the air and you always sound like you're going to get out and so on? God, you say, look, them guys don't understand this, you know, if I'm feeling in, Emma, I'm going to knock the ball between the one in and the one way out to get my two runs, right? But they don't understand. And I think later on, um, Tony Kozasada uh, realized exactly what Richard is doing. It was very intentional because if you look at any Viv tape, right, Viv knows when he reached 48, he going to get that too. Hardly, or more times than not, right? He always gets what he wants. Right? When he reaches in, in, in the 90s and he knows he wants three, Viv is going to hit that ball he, 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 and get three. And most times you see him coming back with the bat in his ear. Most times, you know. Um, so he, he, had, he had that calculation, you know, and... Um, it's amazing. He did tell me about the one with holding also that um, how to dip short, but I think nowadays that the umpires are not allowing that kind of thing. They're looking for the, any deliberate short running, and then you could be, they could, they could give you out, I think. Is that correct? A dead ball. But the thing about it, you said that he would be at the other end to face the ball, really, rather than expose uh, someone who's not uh, technically strong as, as, as he is. But anyway, I just want to say, uh, those are some of the things that I've, ex uh, you know, I've, 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 I'm sharing with you of, of how we, we, you know, we came up. And um, I just want to wish him all the best. 60 years, it's, it's, it's a very long time, you know, and uh, uh, I certainly hope that he lived to, <laughs> uh, to see many more. Um, and to also um, be the person that he is. Uh, he's going to go through life like that, um, believing in and you know, standing up for what he believes in and, and careful for what he falls for. And we certainly wish him all the very best um, um, in, in whatever he decides to do. He was, he was very good at basketball. He was very good at football. And I believe anything that Viv, once it was round, and he, he, you know, he took it very serious, seriously, and... Uh, and he would have been the best at it. This is my opinion, you know, because uh, he played basketball just as good as he played football, right? But cricket was his love, and um, he did mention to me about the the joy that he saw in those um, in those West Indians in England, you know, um, when the West Indies won, you know, and this he said that is something that. You know that he liked very much. It, it made us feel that for for that moment that that we all on par and that, that there's no one you know superior than the other. You know, and Husey mentioned uh, that how we would intimidate bowlers. And I'll give you. I just leave this this last one with you. When Fumanchu was alive, God bless his soul. Right, we were in the recreation grounds. Um, warming up for an Antigua match. And, and in those days, you know, someone just pick up the ball and bowl the batsman and he keep hitting. And every time for Manchu would bowl the ball, he'd come and he'd do some little thing there. And, and most times, we had to try to hit back the ball, you know, because the ball, <laughs> if he wasn't getting any practice, he tried to hit back the ball to Fumancho. And then every time, when Viv did so, at one particular time, the ball came off the edge. So Fumancho said, I see that one had, you know, all sorts of problems. 
I see that one had your eye, you know, I saw the problem. Are you the great boss when they say me? And I had one all kind of problem. And as you do, is gummy on it. And the next ball of Fumancho bowl, right? <laughs> we bugs every right in Fumancho's knee, you know? He say, because I'm having all kind of, you want to kill me, you want to, you want to kill me. <laughs> You know, but no, no, but but he, 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 Viv, I mean, Viv, Viv is very much like that, you know. Um, even, even when we used to play for, for grammar school, you know, and I, I, always, I, I always thought that I was a bowler because I was the one who was bowling most. And every time a batsman set in, he's not bowling me. Every time the batsman, you know, he's not bowling me. And so I had to say, Viv, oh Lord, Jock, man, you're not, you're not even trying me. You know, trying me, he's trying me. And, he, and so, um, Taddy Arendelle at that particular time was the wicked keeper, and Taddy said, Hey, you can't bowl with anybody, man. Give the man a bowling, man. And so, Viv said, Okay, I'm all come. And the way he threw the ball, I had to. <laughs> like, he wanted to knock me down, you know? He vexed me because he gave me the bowling. He flick it. Look. Right? And then get four, four for 25. Oh, you come and hug me up. I said, don't hug me up, man. You, 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 you wait until the, the basketball thing before you say, you give me a little chance. Man. No, no, man, I'm, I know you. You know, so, uh, <laughs> so, 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 you know, Viv, Viv was, you know, like that, you know, he, you know, he, you know, he, he, he was so passionate. Passionate about this thing, boy, that look, if you stand in his way to mash up his game, he going to kill you, boy. Right? So, as, as you see with Fubancho and all the other guys. But anyhow, um, it, it was happy, you know, I was glad to be here tonight. I mean, I hope I was able to share some of the things that he did not even mention in his book. <laughs> all right? And, um, and, and for those who didn't have the opportunity to even come up here and say a few words and so, I, I'm going to say that on your behalf, too that we are going to wish Vivi all the best and, uh, know, tomorrow and hope that he lives long you know, and uh, live a good life and very healthy. Thank you all very much.